Hey coach, welcome back to the channel. So today I want to talk about how to get rid of a bad client from your soccer training business. Now I speak to coaches on a regular basis and if you want to speak to me, visit the description of this video. Below there's three ways you can get in contact with me. Okay, so don't stay stuck with your business. So I speak to coaches every single day and a common question I get asked is Leo, I'm currently working with a very difficult client and I want to release them from the program, but I'm not confident enough to do that. So what I'm gonna share with you today is a couple of tactics or strategies that you can implement to get rid of these, these bad clients from your business. And also what defines a bad client? Okay, so when I think of a, a bad client, I think of three things. Number one is a parent who either doesn't pay you or pays you late. Right, that's a bad client for a number of reasons. Number one, obviously you're providing a service, so you need to be paid on that service. And two, if you are hiring out a venue or a facility to do your training and you're not getting paid on time, but you have to pay that venue, okay, you are losing money. Okay? And also, you're putting a lot of time, effort, and energy into that client without any return. Okay, So that could be the first uh, sign of a bad client. Uh, the second one could be uh, that client's child, so the child you're training, might be disruptive in training sessions. Okay, So they might not listen, they might mess around, they might not put in 100% effort, right? All these things, if they aren't dealt with from the beginning, can escalate and essentially affects the rest of the group, okay? So that's the second example. And then the third example might be a client who isn't consistent. So they show up one week and then you don't see them the next week, then they show up the other week, then you might not see them for another two weeks, Okay, and you need consistency in your business because consistency gets results. If you aren't consistent, then you won't see results with the clients you're working. Those clients won't see results, which means they won't refer other parents to your program. Okay, and also if they aren't consistent, they're not getting results, then you're not going to be able to get any proof or testimonials from them to show that you've worked with clients and you've achieved these, these results with them. Okay, so a bad client is someone that really you need to get rid of. It's a conversation that's difficult to have because parents are very protective of their child. Most parents, you know, they when you tell that we tell them that their child is disruptive or that their child doesn't listen, okay, they will always defend the child. Okay, but the truth of the matter is it's, it's something that has to be said, it has to be done. And again, if you don't s resolve it from the beginning, it's just going to escalate. It'll affect you as the coach because you're going to be going into those training sessions with no energy, no motivation, uh, and just you, you won't want to be there. Okay, you're going to wake up that morning, you're going to start to get a massive headache thinking, oh, I've got to go and drive all this way, spend an hour with this, this, this player. He's not going to put any effort in. He's going to mess around. Uh, he's not going to pay attention. And it just mo demotivates you, but also it starts to affect what you're doing, not only on a personal level, but a professional level as well. Okay. Now, at the beginning phases, when I first started my, my soccer academy, I never filtered out any clients, right? So I kind of accepted anyone that wanted to train with me, which was great because I was getting clients, I was generating revenue, but the problem I started to, to, to start to have was that I started to attract the wrong people. I started to attract people that didn't want to come on a regular basis. I started to attract kids that would mess around in training in my training sessions, which had a knock-on effect because that affected the rest of the group because they became very disruptive. That affected me because I 
lacked a motivation to work with the group. And also it, it affected me as well in what I was doing. Okay, because I started to question myself, is this the right thing to do? Right? Should I be starting this business? Is this business worth it? And you know, the answer was yes, it was worth it, but I had to make changes in the business for it to become worth it. And I had to hit some standards with the families and players I was working with so that they knew that number one, I was in charge. Number two, this was these are the terms and conditions if you want to be part of this program. You know, and three, if you do want to be part of this program, there are expectations from myself that I expect, not just I expect myself to, to complete, which is be on time, put 100% effort, do a really good coaching session. But from the player, I expect them to be on time, to listen, to be coachable, to be a good team player. And if they couldn't commit to those requirements, then ultimately it just wasn't going to work. And the relationship between client and, and coach was going to break. So for you, if you're going through something very similar where you've got a player that you're working with and, you know, it's, it's becoming a headache, it's becoming very difficult to work with, right? A few things I want to share with you today, right? Number one, first of all, speak to the player, right? So if it's a disruptive child during your session, normally what I do is I give them two chances, right? The first, the first chance, I speak to them, and then I remind them that you've only got one more chance. Now, the second chance, if they break it again, then the next step is we speak to the parent. Speak to the parent, and on that conversation with the parent, I say to them, right, I'm gonna give your child one more chance, and if it happens again, then unfortunately we're going to have to we're going to have to go our separate ways. Because normally what I do is I give players that I work with two chances. If they break, then we speak to the parent. And if I feel that he, he deserves a third chance, and not every kid gets that third chance, then we'll go again. Right, but if, he, if he's still disruptive, if he's still affecting the group, and I still feel that, you know what, he needs to go, then he will go. Okay. Now, at the beginning, I was very scared because, well, for a number of reasons. Number one, I didn't want to have that conversation with parents, just because of the reaction that parents might have. Right, A lot of parents are very protective of their children. But... It was a conversation that has to be had, right? It has to be had, but because also it shows leadership from your, your side. If you just let it go and go and go, and then it starts to scale. Ultimately, parents are going to see you as someone that has no control over the group. So what I had to do is I had to stick to my guns, had to have this hard conversation with the parent. We had the conversation, and then what I was scared of at the beginning was if I lose that client, then I was losing money. But I got to the point where I thought to myself, but you know what, if that if I lose one person, I might gain two good ones. So I was willing to sacrifice short term losses for long term gains. Okay? And obviously, over time, what started to happen is I started to to get rid of the clients that didn't want to be there, they, they were disruptive, they just weren't a good fit. And with time, I started to bring in new, new clients who were really good, they wanted to be there, they became very coachable, they started to get results, and they were with me for two, three, or four, even four years in my program. Okay? And those are the type of clients you want. You don't want clients that are constantly giving you a headache, they're very really hard to work with, not just on the field, okay, in terms of the training and the coaching, but away from the field, parents in terms of showing up uh, on time, uh, picking up their child on time, also being communicative with you, so if the child isn't going to be there for a certain training session, to let you know on time, 
And not just that, also pay you on time, right? Pay your company, pay your business on time so that you can obviously pay for, for expenses that you have, okay? So if you want more help, if you want my personal one-on-one -on -one help, then visit the description below this video. There's a number of ways that you can get in contact with me. You can either book a free 15 to 20 minute call via Zoom, or you can send me any questions via WhatsApp or my email at makemoneycoachingsports at gmail.com, right? Reach out to me. Don't stay stuck with your business. I'm here to help and see you on the next one. Again, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, do that now before, before you go, okay? Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video.